We continue today with chapter 12, Seeking and Finding. The ego is certain that love is dangerous, and this is always its central teaching. It never put it in this way. On the contrary, everyone who believes that the ego is salvation seems to be intensely engaged in the search for love. Yet the ego, though encouraging the search for love very actively, makes one provision. Do not find it. Its dictates then can be summed up as seek and do not find. This is the one promise the ego holds out to you and the one promise it will keep. For the ego pursues its goal with fanatic insistence and its judgment, though severely impaired, is completely consistent. The search the ego undertakes is therefore bound to be defeated. And since it also teaches that it is your identification, its guidance leads you to a journey which must end in perceived self-defeat. For the ego cannot love, and in its frantic search for love it is seeking what it is afraid to find. The search is inevitable because the ego is part of your mind, and because of its source the ego is not wholly split off, or it could not be believed at all. For it is your mind that believes in it and gives existence to it. Yet it is also your mind that has the power to deny the ego's existence, and you will surely do so when you realize exactly what the journey is on which the ego sets you. It is surely obvious that no one wants to find what would utterly defeat him. Being unable to love, the ego would be totally inadequate in love's presence, for it could not respond at all. Then you would have to abandon the ego's guidance, for it would be quite apparent that it had not taught you the response you need. The ego will therefore distort love and teach you that love really calls forth the responses the ego can teach. Follow its teaching then, and you will surely search for love, but will not recognize it. Do you realize that the ego must set you on a journey which cannot but lead to a sense of futility and depression? To seek and not find is hardly joyous. It is this the promise you would keep? The Holy Spirit offers you another promise and one that would lead to joy. For His promise is always seek and you will find. And under His guidance you cannot be defeated. His is the journey to accomplishment and the goal He sets forth before you he will give you. For he will never deceive God's Son, whom he loves, with the love of the Father. You will undertake a journey because you are not at home in this world. And you will search for your home whether you realize where it is or not. If you believe it is outside you, the search will be futile, for you will be seeking it where it is not. You do not remember how to look within, for you do not believe your home is there. Yet the Holy Spirit remembers it for you, and He will guide you to your home, because that is His mission. As He fulfills His mission, He will teach you yours, for your mission is the same as His. By guiding your brother's home, you are but following Him. Behold the guide your father gave you, that you might learn you have eternal life. For death is not your father's will, nor yours, and whatever is true is the will of the father. You pay no price for life, for that was given you, but you do pay a price for death, and a very heavy one. 
If death is your treasure, you will sell everything else to purchase it, and you will believe that you have purchased it, because you have sold everything else. Yet you cannot sell the kingdom of heaven. Your inheritance can neither be bought nor sold. There can be no disinherited parts of the sonship, for God is whole, and all his extensions are like him. The atonement is not the price of your wholeness, but it is the price of your awareness of your wholeness. For what you chose to sell had to be kept for you, since you could not buy it back. Yet you must invest in it, not with money, but with spirit. For spirit is will, and will is the price of the kingdom. Your inheritance awaits only the recognition that you have been redeemed. The Holy Spirit guides you into eternal life, but you must relinquish your investment in death, or you will not see life, though it is all around you. And from the workbook, Lesson 89, these are our review ideas for today. I am entitled to miracles. I am entitled to miracles because I am under no laws but God's. His laws release me from all grievances and replace them with miracles and I would accept the miracles in place of the grievances, which are but illusions that hide the miracles beyond. Now I would accept only what the laws of God entitle me to have, that I may use it on behalf of the function He has given me. You might use these suggestions for specific applications of this idea. Behind this, is a miracle to which I am entitled. Let me not hold a grievance against you, but offer you the miracle that belongs to you instead. Seen truly, this offers me a miracle. Let miracles replace all grievances. By this idea, do I unite my will with the Holy Spirit's and perceive them as one? By this idea do I accept my release from hell? By this idea do I express my willingness to have all my illusions be replaced with truth, according to God's plan for my salvation? I would make no exceptions and no substitutions. I want all of heaven and only heaven, as God wills me to have. Useful, specific forms for applying this idea would be, I would not hold this grievance apart from my salvation. Let our grievances be replaced by miracles. Beyond this is the miracle by which all my grievances are replaced. I am entitled to miracles. Let miracles replace all grievances. Today I would seek and find what the Holy Spirit offers me. The correction for the error of separation the salvation of the mind, the gateway to the kingdom of heaven within. I will no longer follow the ego and seek and not find, looking for love in all kinds of forms and places and faces in different situations looking for scraps of love in time and space, when love can never be found where it is not. 
Today I would sink within to the holiness that abides in my heart. I will no longer be tricked by the belief that love can be found outside of myself. I would succeed in recognizing the Christ rather than fail by following the ego's dictates. Today I will search for the obstacles to the awareness of love's presence, that they may be released. The journey to God is a journey without distance to a goal that has never changed. To seek and not find is hardly joyous. The Holy Spirit says, seek and you will find. And so today I follow His guidance, deep within the mind. Today my desire is to go home, experience my identity as home in God. Today I open to accept the atonement, the awareness of my wholeness and completeness the awareness of innocence, divine innocence. I practice with all variations of the ideas in the review today. When I am tempted I can say, behind this is a miracle to which I am entitled. Let me not hold a grievance against you, but offer you the miracle that belongs to you instead. Seen truly, this offers me a miracle. I would not hold this grievance apart from my salvation. Let our grievances be replaced by miracles. Beyond this is the miracle by which all my grievances are replaced. We practiced in deep sincerity. I am entitled to miracles. Let miracles replace all grievances. Amen.